Bush insider calls Trump liberal conspiracy theorist over 9-11 remarks. Another headline, school suspends student elections because not enough minorities won. Another report, Sweden on the verge of collapse as illegal immigrants surge into the country. Another headline, global trade is collapsing as the worldwide economic recession deepens. Meanwhile, socialist professor says kill American gun owners. It's, quote, very simple. Remember, Salon Ma magazine yesterday came out and said kill gun owners. I mean, these people aren't liberals. These are crazy totalitarians. Now, look at this report, and we're going to play a clip of it. And we're going to go to Dr. Steve Pachenik, who joins us for the balance of the hour, and we'll also be taking your calls. Bizarre, Bush insider calls Trump liberal conspiracy theorist over 9-11 remarks. Establishment media getting desperate as they lose control of the narrative. And this all started when Trump said, you know, 9-11 happened on your watch, Bush. And, and it was your brother's watch to so stop claiming I'm inept when it comes to geopolitical security issues. And they said, it, it, it's not his fault that happened. Fox News, Dana Perino, formerly a press secretary under George W. Bush, claimed Donald Trump is a liberal conspiracy theorist. That's a quote. Pushing soft 9-11 trutherism because he challenged Bush's handling of the attack. So now you're a 9-11 truther if you even admit they have a CIA memo saying bin Laden determined to attack using hijacked jet airliners, which is a cover itself. Well, I think it was a dismal weekend when you have liberal conspiracy theories being introduced by the Republican frontrunner, she said on Fox is the Five. It's a soft trutherism. It's what it's like, soft racism and soft bigotry. See, you have a right-wing political correctness here when these people aren't right-wing at all. You put it out there for a reason because you want to be provocative. It was in the New York Post, which is Republican, basically. Uh, after 9-11, the headline, Bush knew. The Carlisle Group, owned partially by the Bin Ladens, made all that money off the wars. 15 of the 19 supposed hijackers came from Saudi Arabia. None of them from Iraq. And now we have new memos that have come out this weekend that Blair and Bush fixed intelligence to attack Iraq. So in the time we've got, I want to cover the waterfront with Dr. Steve Pachenik, frequent guest on the show. He's been coming on for almost 14 years. He came on months after 9-11, about three months after. He's an MD, PhD, American psychiatrist, former State Department official. We're going to go to him in just a second. I want to get his take on the fact that 9-11 truth is starting to come out because in his email to me, he said that was the first issue that he wanted to cover. And so we are certainly going to be getting into it. Also, was Oregon a false flag like Newtown? He also says a major war will start between Israel and Palestine. And he wants to talk about the whole speaker fight situation for the Speaker of the House now that Boehner is set to leave in 11 days. I'm not going to hold my breath, though. Who knows? So that's all coming up. But first, here is the former White House press secretary for Bush uh, acting like it's basically evil to point out that the government was in charge when 9-11 happened. I mean, that's a fact. But now reality is being twisted. Just like they said, there's no Obamacare fees if you don't get it. No penalties. Well, AP's reporting they're now kicking in. This is the attack on reality. Here's the clip. That, even that, the left doesn't do what Donald Trump did. Even only the farthest right lunatics had, were truthers. And this is now the Republican Party, and you have formerly lunatics talking about something. They have sane people actually having to spend time talking about this. There are legitimate questions about 9-11 and preparedness in terms of the agencies not talking to each other, the NSA, the CIA. There was a, a more fact-based way to attack George W. Bush if that's the way you wanted to get to Jeb Bush. And I think Donald uh, went with... But actually, easy... even that wouldn't hold up because in almost every instance, you have independent... Like, for example, the 9-11 Commission report, 
great book. I suggest that everybody that wants to be president should read it because oh, great it idea. is the actions that were taken afterwards to try to protect. And I got in several years ago on Hannity, I said something like the president kept us safe. The left has never sure. let me up on that because I didn't say after 9-11. Obviously, we said that here, one of the first weeks we were on this show in they July go crazy. of 2011, we mentioned that we we had George Bush kept us safe. We said it like that. I agree right, with that's you. That's enough. And we got now, I, I read her quote about left wing conspiracy theorist trutherism, but that's the rest of her statement. And it's all about consensus. Get up there in a psych warfare at, at, at junior high level. It's not sophisticated and go just like. Jeb Bush just said, it's not proper to question 9-11 and even say his brother could have protected us. So you can't even do that. He said, no one reasonable does that. And then weak-minded people go, okay, these aren't the droids we're looking for. Move along. This is the equivalent of hypnotizing people. Just you don't look at this, you don't question it, move along. And joining us to talk about that is a psychiatrist and a, of course, a uh, medical doctor as well, Dr. Steve Pachenik, stevepachenik.com, also co-wrote some of the books, of course, with the late, great uh, man that brought you the Patriot Games and so many other bestsellers, Tom Clancy, uh, and he joins us right now. Uh, Dr. Pachenik, a lot to cover. Good to have you back with us. It's always a pleasure, Alex, and I want to thank you and particularly your audience for the past 14 years for being able to be truthers and the so-called marginalized majority, and I'll tell you why. Jeb Bush, like his former brother, Bush uh, Jr., and his father, Bush Sr., are not very bright people. And he literally fell in love in what we call a PSYOPs program, where he thought he'd become president of the United States. And I warned them repeatedly, if he, becomes, if he comes to the forefront, we will tear him apart and basically will use him as a target to get to 9-11, and he fell for it. And now that Trump came to the forefront, Carson, but that is the expression of the majority of us who now know, after 14 years, that 70% of us believe it was an inside job. And in fact, it was an inside job. The real truthers, the architects of America, myself, where Bush's own deputy, Secretary of Defense, the key man in his administration, even admitted to me it was a standout false flag, and I'll go before a U.S. prosecutor, given the name, as well as the names of two CIA operatives who were involved and had to admit that it was a standout and false flag, as well as the fact that the administration has been very afraid of me, including the fact that the head of Cyber Command today said I was the most dangerous man in this country for the simple reason that they know that I can run PSYOPs operations against them, which I had for 14 years, as well as PSYOPs operation overseas where we were successful. Now, I don't say this about myself. I'm saying this to you, Alex, because you were there when I needed you and when the truthers needed you. I am very proud to be a truther and I'm very proud to be a so-called conspirator because, in fact, Jeb Bush knows very well, and I've met him, and I told him that his brother's lucky not to be assassinated because we want him in there in order for he and his family to deserve the punishment that the Bushes deserve for 50 years of miscreant behavior against the United States. It didn't just start with Jeb Bush, who was a liar, a conspirator, a totally inept entrepreneur whose wife was indicted to buy the customs, his daughter's been in jail, whose own family is the disgrace to the conservative values, who he himself is a disgrace, as well as Marvin and Neil. Those are facts. They were involved in Silverado. I had to take over the SNLs in Maryland, and then I had to go after Marvin and Mel and Neil in, in 1980s, but they were excused from prosecution while we prosecuted people in 1980. So my involvement doesn't just go back with serving Bush Sr. under the Reagan administration. It goes back 20 years before that. And let me get back to the truth, which was one thing that, this, that you people have always asked. Did George Bush Sr. actually fly out of a plane and sky die? The answer is no. He was never shot down. The truth of the matter is that everyone who flew around him in World War II knew he was not shot down, but he began the big lie of all lies, and it continued in the family. Not one person in that family has served our country nobly or patiently.
patriotically. And in fact, Jeb Bush, as long as he was out there, was a perfect target for me and others who could take him apart and come in from the extreme right, or what we call the truthers and the conservative element, and allow a guy like Trump and Carson to come in and say, you know what? We feel we talk for the majority of the silent majority. In other words, the marginalized majority. Sure. What fact, do you no make family, of the current finish, situation? No family instrumental to this country than the Bush and the Clintons. Let me repeat that again. I work in intelligence. I ran PSYOPs operations. I worked very closely with the Bushes. I know Roger Ailes of Fox. So I know exactly what they're trying to cover up and what they're doing. It is not working. Thanks to you, Alex, and thanks to the American public, they're falling apart. Well, I don't want the thanks. The Bush is there, the easier it is for me to attack them and the United States to attack Jeb and the Bush family in total. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Alex. No, no, we, we've got to go to break, but I want to come back and get, get more into this. 9-11 being brought up by Trump. He obviously knows what he's doing. Of he's course he picking does. a fight with him. I want to get your view on Donald Trump. Can he be trusted? What you yes, think of yes. Carson? where you see all of this going, what you think about the Russians uh, over there in Syria, the fact that it's known that our government's running Al-Qaeda now. I mean, stuff that people just couldn't believe five years ago is now being accepted. And how do you think it's going to backfire on people like uh, Purina, uh, the lady on The Five Show, whenever she sits there and does that? Well, the war to take over was lost. The globalists did get control, but now there's a war to expose them, and they are losing. Dr. Steve Pachinik's our guest, stevepachinik.com. The military three years ago, two years ago, said we will not be the Air Force for Al-Qaeda in Syria. We have seen uh, members of Congress come out and, and expose the 28 pages on 9-11. The work you, the audience, has done, and, and people like Steve Pachinik and, and architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth and countless others have done, is now bearing fruit, and it's going to continue. Now, people don't buy the Bin Laden hoax. Cy Hirsch came out and said it's fake, you know, 13 years after Pachinik did. So the truth is, no one buys what they're doing. They're losing credibility worldwide. Geopolitically, what does this do to the criminal cabals on the inside knowing that people now in the court of public opinion are aware of who really carried out 9-11 and how does that affect their next move? And then your take on Donald Trump, your take on Carson and where the country is. Thank you very much. The truth of the matter is this is one of the most, one of the most phenomenal American revolutions I have ever seen and the one we were waiting for, Alex. I thank you and I thank the audience and I thank the so-called alternative media, which really became the mainstream media. The reality is Trump had been monitoring this mainstream media for a long time. I knew it. He knew it. Many of us had known that. And in fact, when we put his name up for the next presidency, he took it and basically ran with it. And this is the true expression of the moral majority and the fact that we are so tired of the people who committed the crime of 9-11. Now, once Trump gets in, my suspicion is many of them will be arrested. And that's what I think will happen in the long run. I don't know Trump personally. I do know his background. I know a lot about his character. He is a man who will do exactly what he said. Ben Carson, I happen to know a little bit better because I was in John Hopkins Medical Center. He's a well-known neurosurgeon. He's a man of his convictions. And believe me, once he puts his mind to something that is immoral, as the 9-11 stand-down was, there will be consequences. So, in fact, we have to look at this as a very positive movement where, in fact, where the people who've committed this, and we have the names. It's not as if we don't know the names. It's the Hadleys and the Condoleezza Rice and the Rumsfelds and the Cheneys and a whole bunch of them, even Sandy Berger, who worked on the Clintons. These are the names that will be eventually known very well and possibly arrested in, in time. And that depends on the American public because now they're very scared. The backlash was huge. They never, never expected us to come in and be able to pronounce the truth 14 years later. But thanks to you, the audience, and the American public, God bless them. Please they don't give us any thanks. We're doing our duty. Plus, no, no, we don't no, want you to it. take Wait, credit for you, it. No, no. Let me explain something. <laughs> doing your duty and going beyond the call of duty is really what you did 14 years ago. You were a very young man who took a very big risk on someone you didn't know, namely me. And I never forgot that, nor did the American public. And, and you deserve that, Alex. 
That's why CNN and Fox News are in trouble. I know Roger, and I like Roger Ailes, but he's finished. He knows that with Charlie Krauthammer, whom I know, really he can't go anywhere. They just repeat the same